All right, it's been a while. Time for another rant of the guru. Thank you to all of you who've sent me some positive messages. And also thank you to all the haters that have sent me some negative messages. It is what it is. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, we're not going to dwell on negativity. I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about some questions, answer some questions that I've been given. One of you asked me about the history of Sirach. So I'm going to go into that a little bit with some detail. Uh, first of all, you need to understand something. Penchak Silat Sirach is not that old. Uh, it was probably sometime in the mid to late 1800s in which Pak Sirach was <coughs> uh, on the scene, let's say, on the Silk Road. And the story goes... One side of the family says that, that he was from the Badui and from the Badui village and this and that, and that from the Badui they get their Sirach. But in reality, I have friends that have been to the Badui. I have friends that have gone over there. The sea lot in the Badui looks a little more like Chimande, and it's very little sea lot. It's not as uh, intricate as what you see in uh, Pukalan Sirach or Sirach from the Dutuar's family. The real truth is, Pak Sirach comes from the city of Cheribon in Indonesia. And he was a Arab, Chinese, Indo man who was also a horse trader. So he would trade horses all the way from the Middle East back down to Indonesia. So obviously this man must have seen a lot, traveled on the Silk Road, traveled in trade, okay? And he had a bum leg and a bum arm. So he was somewhat handicapped. Um, I've been told that the story is he actually had an atrophied arm or an atrophied bicep and he had a leg that was not working properly. So this is probably where you get a lot of things in the art where things are based on leverage and off balancing and being deceptive and sneaky about your movement. Um, also being very aware of your positioning and your timing and things like that. So anyhow, in terms of training, it's very important that when you train your Sirach, you keep in mind the idea of how to train as if you had a handicap, how to limit your body, because then that'll help you understand how to move and how to make these movements and whatnot. A lot of times we get comfortable with the idea because we can use all our hands and use both our legs, but if you limit that stuff, you find out what'll really work and what internal principles are gonna work when you're doing this stuff. But anyhow, back to the history. So Paxarok was sometime around the late, mid 1800s, early, uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. And most people know of the line from Masjud. Masjud was a man from Sumatra who learned Sumatran arts and brought that to the table. And then he learned whatever Paksarak gave him. And then that became Masjud's expression, which is the expression you see from Uncle John and some of the detoires. And you see particularly from Uncle Paul detoires. Okay. Then you have... Uh, Masroon, who's another expression. Supposedly Masroon was kicked out of Paksarak's group of uh, partners because he was too violent and he was unforgiving towards people. So supposedly that's a very aggressive style. Okay, Then you have, uh, and you see that in Masroon and Masjud, you see that also in the Suwanda family. They have a type of Sirak that also comes from that, from that line. <laughs> Uncle Willem has a Sirach line, not just from Masjud, which is where he gets it from Uncle John and Uncle Vanji, but also from Uncle Adi, and from Masjud, from Pak Sirach directly, you have De Groot, and you have uh, uh, Sergiorno and Pak Ace, uh, Ace, Pak Ace. So, <laughs> Uncle Bill Sirach, Pak Willem Sirach, is a Sirach that has both a line from Masjud, but also a line from three other teachers going back to Pak Sirak. And you see a lot of uh, the animal training, Moniet, which is monkey, Harimau, uh, or tiger, Machan, okay, Garuda, or Garut, which is the eagle, and Ular, the snake. You see those main animals in the movements. And the difference is, where Uncle Paul, you see the Juru separate from the Lankas and the Kudas, even though he stopped teaching the Kudas sometime in the late 70s because of his back or whatever. In Uncle Willem's training of Sirak, you see the Lankas, the Kudas, and the Jurus are all together in longer sets, 
longer jurus. And if you go to Indonesia or you look at Indonesian old school silat and old school kuntau, you see this occurring. The jurus, lankas, and kudas are all together, mixed together. Okay, and then it would be separated out to learn and study pieces. So, <clears throat> a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between Uncle Paul's sarak and Uncle Willem's sarak? Well, I'll give you a basic understanding. Uncle Paul Sirak is 18 jurus or 18 ideas of the hands and then several different platforms and then putting that all together little by little. Uncle Willem's is three long jurus that have many jurus inside of them and has the panjar already inside of the form. So if you're studying the juru, you're already studying the panjar and you're already studying the kuda and you're already studying the lanka along with the jurus. For example, the first juru in Uncle Willem's sarak contains all the 18 jurus in Paul's sarak, in Uncle Paul's sarak. So <clears throat> this is a very important thing to understand because a lot of people will say, well, Uncle Willem doesn't know sarak. Well, no, it's that you didn't see Uncle Willem's sarak. <clears throat> and this has to do with, according to Uncle Willem, the style of sarak that he learned was not based solely on masjud. It was also based on other teachers, De Groot, Pak Ace, Pak Sarjorno, under, uh, and, and De Groot under Pak Sarak. Masjud went his own way. So when Masjud separated sometime in the early 1900s, because uh, if you, you got to figure the railroad that they were building, that the Detoir's family and De Fries family was building in the 1930s or 1920s, 1930s, maybe a little bit before that, Masjud was around teaching the family. But you had other teachers doing Sirak also. And they were outside of Masjud's line. So Masjud went his own way. It's kind of like when Bruce Lee separated from Ipman, he was doing Bruce Lee's way. But then you had like Wang, Lao, uh, Wang Shaolin doing his way different from Ipman. So you have different teachers, different lineages. So it's very important to understand also the root of Sirak. In terms of Indonesian Sirak, you have Sirak derives from Chimande, Sarbandar, Chikalong, um, Harimau, or Minangkabau, okay? And then it derives also from animals. So you have the animals of Garuda, the eagle, Harimau, the tiger, Ular, the snake, and um, Monyet, the monkey, okay? The four principal animals. <laughs> and then there's a fifth animal, which is the insect, the spider, okay? A lot of people don't know that, but Sarak is actually a spider style, spider system. That's the Indonesian influence of that, right? <clears throat> but you go deeper, you have Chinese influence also. You have Bakwa, Xingyi, Tai Chi, okay? Which is originally was one art, which was the Kun Tao, or the way of the hand, or the way of the fist, or the law of the fist, okay? Or the way, okay? You could think of it that way. Chimande is a derivative of Southern Shaolin, okay? And Bakwa footwork. Harimau, Menangkabau, is a derivative of old Tai Chi, the same root as Chen Tai Chi, and Bagua, okay? Um, Chikalong is a derivative of something that was probably like an old form of Tai Chi, similar to Aikido and Tai Chi. And Sarbandar is actually from Sumatra also. So this is a big mix that's inside of, of the Sarak, particularly the Sarak from the Detoir's family. Now, what makes the Detoir's family Sarak different than the Sarak in Indonesia is that you have the Pukulan from them comes from old Dutch bare-knuckled boxing, Okay. And it comes from Western fencing, medieval arts. Okay, the de Tuars family and the de Fries family added the fencing. The platforms that they have did not come from Indonesia per se. They came from Spanish fencing, Dutch fencing, French fencing. The de Tuars, the de Tuars family, their family goes all the way back to the same guards that were protecting Napoleon. And they go back to the Crusades, the Crusaders, and even further back to the Roman Empire when the Romans fought the Cathars in the French mountains. So <clears throat> this family added their entire war arsenal of understanding of combat to their Indonesian art of Serak. And that's what makes their Serak, Serak unique and different to the Serak that you see in Indonesia. It's not the same thing. Many people say it's the same thing, but if you analyze it and study it, you find that it's different. So <clears throat> also what separates it is everybody in that family had gone through World War I and World War II, and even prior to that had gone through different conflicts. And even after that, like Uncle Maurice fought in several wars all the way up to the Korean War. So the whole family 
had war time. And the Detoir's brothers all had to go through concentration camps and war-driven uh, war conflict in Indonesia against the Japanese, um, and then during World War II, and then even after that, and even during some of the uh, uprising, the Islamic uprising. So there's a lot of things in that art that became battle-tested. So they threw away the flowery stuff and maintained only the essence of truly what works in combat and jungle warfare or warfare for the concrete. If you look at the sea lots of today, the stuff that looks like Sedak in Indonesia is the stuff that's coming out of Jakarta, the Chinese systems of the Kuntaus. Um, there's several different ones. They have different names. If you look at those, they're very, very similar to some of the Jurus. And we'll go into that in another video. I'll, I'll give you the names of those. But anyhow, it's very hard. I've had friends that have gone to Indonesia and they go to research and they say, they come back to me, man, I never saw Sirak over there. Now, all of a sudden, you see everybody teaching Sirak. It's like, where did it come from? So I'm going to give you a little bit of insight about that. Dolph de Vries and Uncle Maurice de Toires, they were going to Indonesia for several years, every year, once, twice a year, up until the time they died. And they were teaching private students over there. So there you see some elements of the de Toires and de Vries style. Okay, but anyhow, long story short, there's different lineages. It doesn't just go to Masjud. You have Masjud, you have De Groot, you have Pak Ase, Pak Arjorno, you have um, going back to Pak Sirak. And even from Masjud's time, you have Masroon. I don't know if there's a Mas Mustafa too, supposedly. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I know that uh, some say that there's a Marjuki, but according to the, ha the family history, Marjuki was a friend of the families of the boys and played marbles with Puck Vic. So I don't know about that history. Anyhow, there's a lot of history you can look into. You can do the research. It's a very unique art. If you are training this art, dig deep and you'll learn a lot of incredible things, not just about sea lot, but Western uh, old medieval training or much.